Hello and welcome to another episode of the How to Create VR tutorial series, where you learn by watching other VR, AR, and MR professionals create the magic. I'm Marcelo Lewin, an immersive technologies evangelist, creator, producer, and the guy behind HowToCreateVR.com. My guest creator today is Daniel K. Hutton, a 2D and VR filmmaker. Today, Daniel will be giving us an overview of VR VR and how he used it to create his interactive horror VR experience. But before we get started, if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to my channel. It will only take you a second, but the more subscribers I have, the easier it will be for me to get guests like Daniel. All right, Daniel, welcome to the tutorial series. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to have you here. I checked out your experience. I don't know how, I think Veer sent me a link to your experience and I thought it was super cool. I like horror. It's interesting because I hate horror for films, but I love horror and VR. So I tried it and I thought it was super cool what you did. Good, thank you. You're going to show us today basically how you created this experience, right? Using the Veer VR experience. Yep, yeah, that's correct. Before we do that, why don't you give us a little bit of your background? How did you get into filmmaking, specifically VR, and what other tools beyond VR do you use? I kind of just kind of fell into the VR thing, to be honest. It was actually, weirdly enough, my dad that kind of introduced me to it as he bought a headset cheap off some website, he invited me around to sort of try it out. And yeah, after that, I was kind of like, this is amazing. At the time, I got a Samsung Galaxy phone purely because it was the only phone that was able to use a, the Gear 364. So I chucked in my iPhone just purely so I could uh, get this camera and go out and shoot 360 stuff. And yeah, and then after that, I was just sort of going out shooting anything and everything. I was reaching out to like sports teams near me to create VR experiences for them. Just kind of snowballed from there, really. Obviously, you use VR VR. Do you use other tools for your VR creation, like adding hotspots and stuff, or do you mainly focus with the VR app? Just the VR app at the moment. How did you come up with your interactive horror experience? What was the inspiration for this? Okay, this is kind of a weird one. So at the time, I'd been listening to a podcast series that basically chronicled the behind the scenes of the making of The Exorcist. So when I was asked about sort of putting together an interactive experience, that was still front and center in my mind. So I kind of wanted to do something that had some sort of demonic possession, if you will, in it. And that kind of sort of fit in with the location I had available to me at the time as well. Very cool. And what was your pre-production process? Did you storyboard anything? Uh, did you write the story first? What was that process like? Basically, I kind of mapped it all out on the wall of my apartment with this card. So starting off from like the first scene and then kind of going to each scene because at the beginning it kind of splits into two directions. So we, you have like the main storyline which has an ending to it. But then there's also this little subplot which is kind of more like a little separate experience. So it's kind of, I always refer to it as like the Where's Wally mini game because it can lead you outside and then you've got to walk around this car park and look for you know, someone sort of hanging around in the car park acting strange and stuff, if that makes sense. Totally. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, let's go ahead and jump in and okay. uh, I'll jump in with any questions I have. Okay. So, yeah, first of all, you want to log into VIA. So, yeah, you'd need to get an account if you don't already have one. So this is just my main profile screen, but any screen uh, on the VIA website, you'll see the upload icon in the top corner there. So if you just click on that. So you, see, you get two options, you get choose files to upload, which is just your regular videos, or you get create interactive experience. You want to click on that, and that will bring you to the basic information page. So then this is where you can put in your title, description, and tags to help people find it, whether you want to set it to public or private, and then add it to any collection if you have other interactive experiences. But then if you have that, you don't, you don't need to know how to do it because you've already done one. So yeah, so then after, after you filled all that in, if you click on this and then you get started uploading each scene and whatnot, but we're not going to do this because I've already uploaded some. Quick so, question for you. The metadata for that we saw on the left there, that's for the project, not for the scene. That's for the overall project. Yeah, that's for the overall project. Got yeah. it. Okay. And, he, and on the right was the scene and you started using that basically to add scenes. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, yeah. perfect. Um, so yep. Go back in. So yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so that you would that. click on plus right. and it adds a new scene to start. Uh, it'll, it'll, add, it'll add the first scene to start, but you'll, you'll see in the next page how you add each one. So 
So this is one I've already uploaded a few scenes just to get started. So if we hit edit, okay, so it'll take me into that. So I've filled out basic. So then we click on edit scene and hotspots. So this takes us into the main page, which is what you'll go into when you upload your first scene. So the, the first scene will upload here. And then ideally you'd, you'd want to let that load and process before uploading the next scene. Yeah, because it is basically it's not going to make it any faster by doing it otherwise. So yeah, and is there a visual done. indication of that it's been processed and ready to use, or no? Yeah, yeah, you'll get you'll get a percentage that will go up in the middle of the the circle. I see. So you know, still... so if there's a percentage yeah. there, that means it's still processing, kind of like YouTube. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it will get to the end of percentage, and then it will say it's processing. It it doesn't it doesn't take very long. It actually the uploads are actually pretty quick, to be fair. So yeah, after you upload your first scene, then you can add the next one and so on and so on. And the cool thing about this is that they don't necessarily have to be in the order that they come in in your story. So what you can do is for this particular one, it will automatically it'll tell it to go to the next scene that you've uploaded. However, if I wanted to go from this particular scene to say this end one, I can then change it to so this one figuring uh, so I can automatically just change it so that when the viewers finish watching this scene if they haven't already moved on using the hotspot it will automatically take them to that scene or if it's the final scene you can just get it to stop or if there's something specific that you're you know you want to do in a specific, in a particular scene and stuff then you can get it to replay and stuff, which is which is kind of cool. That's when I was playing around with this at first, when I was you know working all all out and uploading everything. That was one of the concerns I had that the final scene was just then just gonna loop over and over again. So it was really cool that you sort of had that option to stop, and then also anything that I uploaded afterwards. Again, it was like that where it was like, is it gonna jump onto that next one when I don't want it? Those those scenes are like meant for the beginning, which is kind of where I had. The scenes because the, the I started off by creating the the main storyline first, and then add this little sort of sub story afterwards. So it was cool that you know after the the main plot had finished, you didn't just then just jump back into this other sub story. I could just get it to stop after that, and then yeah, sort of go back and do the other stuff. So and, that was kind of cool. And when it stops, does it just leave it on the last frame? Is that what it does? Yeah, yeah, it just, it just leaves it on the last frame. Okay, and when you hit uh, replay the scene, is there a way to tell it to start at a particular point? So, for example, let's say a video has an intro, but you want it to replay once the person walked up and is done with the intro and you just want it to loop from a certain point. Can you do that with replay the scene, or is it pretty much starts from the beginning? It starts from the beginning. So what your best bet is is to anything you shoot is best to edit edit it down beforehand in like so, uh, software like, I don't know, like Premiere Pro, right. uh, for example. So you have the exact like amount of time in the scene that you want. Because you, you, at the moment you don't have that capability of, of editing. Of it. starting at, at a certain yeah. point. Yep, yep, um, okay. Not that I'm aware of anyway. Okay. Okay, so, so this is just like a handful of scenes from the interactive experience that I did. So in this particular scene, this is when you first enter this apartment room. So for me, it was key because obviously with VR, there's no frame and stuff. So you can't point people in the direction. They're just going to look wherever they want to look. So for me, it's important to, when they enter this scene, they're entering into the room. So it makes sense that they're looking directly into the room. But when I had the camera set up, I had it so the main lens was facing this way so the cool thing about this is that you can actually change the opening view when you start so if you just turn it around so like this and then if you hit set here and then so I just want it so that's cool because then it looks like they've just walked straight into the room and stuff about sets and that's it done so now when that plays it will now open 
on that part of the image. So you can change your point of interest, basically, yeah. regardless of how you shot it. Yeah. Yeah, would yeah. make makes sense. Is, yep. Yeah, which is really cool. Okay, so audio was a was a big part of it as well to sort of point people in the direction of where they needed to go, or if I wanted them to look in you know in a certain direction and whatnot. So in this particular scene, there was meant to be a sound coming from the bathroom in order to try and get people to sort of go into that room. So I'd click on sound, um, choose a file. So do 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 do. Okay, so let's just use this one. So it's like I think it's some demon breath thing. Okay, so then that'll that'll load up. And what it'll do is it'll, it'll attach that to this label here. And then this is cool. So you can you can have it so the sound or the music or whatever you use can be heard like entirely within the within the experience, or you can use this, which is to spatialize the audio. Uh, so then if you move it there, when it plays, if you're facing this way, you'll only hear it in your left ear, and obviously vice versa, you hear it in your right ear. If you're facing it, you'll hear it in both ears, and so on and so on. That's very cool. Now, uh, it showed there, if you open up the properties again, it shows there that you can always show or hide. Um, what does that mean? Yeah. So with the show and hide, basically you can set it so that it can pop up later on in this clip. So if I always, then it will play as soon as you walk into that room. Whereas if I want the person to walk up, like get into the room, have a look around first and then suddenly hear it. I can set it so that it starts, uh, say like 10 seconds after they walk into the room and then play until the end of that clip if they haven't moved on to the next bit. Oh, I see. Um, so sort of a delay. Way. Once you walk in, it'll be yeah. 10 seconds and it'll go all the way to the end. Now, but yeah. that has nothing to do with then showing the actual icon, right? Does the icon show or can you hide that icon? At the moment, uh, the icon shows. Okay. But I think that's something that they're, they're working on because I did mention that because right. that's something I always wanted to hide. Exactly. Really <laughs> that needs to be shown. Right. Um, but they have done something with the other one and we'll get into that next. So, yeah. So, obviously, you, you hear the, you're meant to hear the noises coming from the bathroom. And then it also is going to give you the opportunity to go and check it out. I have one question before we move on to the hotspot, uh, back to the audio icon there. When you mouse over the icon, you have little, yeah, little icons are around it. Can yeah. you explain what those are? Yeah, yeah, sure. So this one gives you the option to resize it. So with mine, I tried to just make it as small as possible because I didn't really want it to take up any space. This can sort of turn it, but again, not really needed. This one I never really used. I just inverts the image within it. But yeah, I think the only one really, really, really going to need is the the resize, just purely to try and make it sort of take up less screen real estate as possible. I see. Okay, cool. Thank you. That's okay. So yeah, so next bit is the hotspot, so we can uh, give people the opportunity to go and check out the bathroom. So move that there okay so then what you do is you can attach a different scene to this hotspot so kind of similar to what we did with that up there where we could attach the scene so going on to the next scene and whatnot same with this so when people click on this hotspot we can choose where it takes them so we want it to take them to the bathroom so we set that there and also we can change the icon but we can also add our own as well, which is kind of cool. So yeah, so people have that option. But we'll just leave it on this Question screen. for you on that, because if you can add your own, does that mean I can add like basically a transparent one? And then that way um, it doesn't show? Does it support transparency, do you know? It, I think it does. But I think the problem with that, because it's a hotspot and you want people to click on it, they kind of need to see it. 
Well, yes and no, right? Because I could, through audio cues, go come in here, come into my room and, you know, point in there so they'll figure it out. I mean, if you want to make it where it's a little more intriguing, right? So this is this is the thing that would have been handy on the... On the audio. With the audio. Yeah. But I think I think that's that's something that will be coming soon. Right. To be really cool. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but but it does support transparent but, graphics. Yeah. Then. Okay. Cool. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. And then you can also label it. So so if you click on show, then obviously it comes up with. Over uh, I see. For like an enterprise one, so. app where you're doing training, this makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So we can put investigate. So then at least then like it get, it shows what people are going to be. Yeah, the re- the reason why they would have to to go into that room. Yeah, yeah, if makes they didn't sense. Already, and again, it's similar with the audio as well. You have the option where that can just sort of pop up later on if you want them to, you know, have an actual proper look around the room first, and then, you know, then that could come in say five seconds in, and then it suddenly shows up or three seconds in. And does it fade um, in? Uh, or does it just pop up, pop in? No, it just pops up. It just pops up. Okay. Yeah, it just pops up. So yeah. So once you've set all your all your details on that, so set up as always, then that is done. So you can just click off, and it's in. So then, go back to it. Okay. So yeah. So you you can preview it and stuff as you go along. But I find it easier just to sort of go through it all first, and then sort of play it out as I would if I was watching it to make sure everything all works. So the next thing after clicking on the, the investigates hotspot would be the bathroom. So again, this, this was another one that I, um, when I first sort of come in, it had, it has you sort of walk, walking in and looking sort of straight here, but I kind of, I didn't want to do that. It, you know, not like the other one where I wanted to look them straight forward. There's not really much going on here. So I kind of wanted the viewer to just uh, look at it because, it's, yeah, there's still not much going on, but it's, it's, it's better than the wall behind. Uh, so again, set the uh, starting point to look this way. And then it also gives clues because at the beginning of the storyline, you find out that you're actually kind of playing a, a security guard of sorts. And one of your colleagues has, come, uh, has asked you to check out this room. So part of it is just sort of looking around. And there is one kind of clue hidden, but it seemed cool at the time, but you won't really see it because obviously the image quality isn't going to be great until, you know, headsets and stuff get better. But there is, there is a little clue somewhere around the room. So it's cool to look out for. So yeah. So anyway, the, the point is the, the viewer comes in here to sort of investigate what this noise was coming in. Comes in, the noise is gone. So after looking around, we want to lead them back out again. And this is all built into something. So, so stay with me here. So we set another hotspot, which then leads out to back into that room, but I've called it the room two. So it's essentially the same shot, but I'm setting it so we can lead up to something else. So, and I'm assuming you can add multiple hotspots and multiple sounds to yeah. a video, right? So you can have a yeah. sound coming yeah, from absolutely. the left and one coming from the right. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. Sensory overload. I think that would yes. be Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. So there we go. So we've got the we've got the hotspot there now. So we come in, we come back out again, which then then lead us to this scene. Now this this is another key point because this that leads on to the first scare. Uh, you know, uh, uh, hopefully it's it's a scare for anyone watching it. Although it's going to be a spoiler now, but it's fine. There's there's other stuff going on. So again, so at this point they've come back into this room. They've decided that nothing, you know, there's nothing going on in this in this room. They're about to leave. So again, want to set it. Because this is key that they're going to be looking this way. So that the door's here. But the mirror is sort of vital to the next scene. So I've set the frame so it's facing that way. And then what I do is add a hot spot here around this way. Set it so it goes onto the next scene. 
And then again, just telling the viewer that they can leave. So bear in mind they're watching this without sort of knowing what's what's coming next. Um, let's click show that as well. Okay. So once that's once that's done, the viewer can then click on this hotspot, thinking, right, well, I'm gonna leave the room now. But oh no. So they'll click on this, which will then lead us on to the next scene. And this is where the key part of the framing comes in. So I'm going to set it this because we just set it. We want them to look this way specifically because and if my allowing we'll say something will pass the mirror. So that's why we kind of want them facing that way as soon as they hit that hotspot on this scene. So once they hit that, they're already looking, they're still looking that way, but it just looks as though the lights have just gone off and then something's in the room with them. But also the cool part is that if you turn around as well during this, and this is something I did in editing before uploading this, as you can see the figure's there in the mirror, but if you turn around, there's nothing. So basically, I just sort of took two shots, one with the person going past the mirror and one without, and then just spliced them together in Premiere Pro and then exported them. So that's another little cool thing. So with this, I, I used um, a sound effect for the overall, but sort of kind of looking back at it, I kind of wished that I had some spatial audio as they went past, just on the off chance that someone did miss it, although I don't know. Hopefully they didn't, which would have had, which would have been a bit cooler. But then at the same time, I didn't want the audio bit shown when they looked around. But anyway, so I mean I haven't got the next scene that would be a bit. There's no need. But as a uh, in the actual finish thing, so they go past. So the person's like, oh, what was that? Looks round. Obviously can't see anything. And this, this then plays into the next scene. So I think it was around this time that I added this hot spot there that pops up to then go and investigate over that side of the room, which something else will happen in that next scene. So again, with the investigates. And one thing I noticed while you're doing that is that uh, because the timeline is at four, it starts it at four, which is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so then set it, leave that, leave always so off. So if we go back, so yeah, so then you see, so this will come in, so response, and then the hotspot will then show up. So that's kind of like, you know, the, the, the basics and the main part of it really. I mean, it's, I mean, hopefully it's shown that it's like really straightforward to use. Yeah, it's pretty pretty simple, but yet uh, effective and straightforward. I do have a couple of questions on the top right. You have background music. I'm assuming that's music that is throughout the entire experience that happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So uh, then, so if throughout. how do you figure the length of the music? Does it loop automatically if it ends before the experience ends? I think it does. I'm not to, to be honest. I'm not entirely sure. It doesn't really give you the option. I think it does loop. I would assume it does, but was, okay, was, but we can yeah, find out was, from Veer if it does or not. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think back now to when I was doing it, because I remember I, I was playing around with this to see if, rather than having to go back into Premiere Pro and do something, but yeah, it just, it just sends it through the whole experience, but I never, I never went through enough to sort of find out if it loops, but I imagine it would. And then the other one, display scene list, that's where you get to see the scenes if you want to display them, but if you don't, it doesn't show anything, yeah. right? Yeah, because otherwise yeah, it yeah, would so be spoilers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You don't really want people jumping backwards and forwards for it. What's enable timeline and preview? This is a good point. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I don't see any changes to it. So it'd be interesting to find out what, maybe that's uh, something in the future or something where you get to see all the hotspots in a timeline, maybe. I don't know. Possibly. I don't know. Yeah, it'd be. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to have a look at that. It'd be interesting to. I'm intrigued now. Yeah, or maybe it's the, that, time, that slider at the bottom that appears when you preview it. So you know where your video is at. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe is that yeah. questions to, uh, to ask Fear directly. Very, and at the bottom left, you have like an all with an icon. 
yeah, so that's just all of the hotspots that you've got in that particular scene, just sort of listed. Oh, that's great. Okay, so when you click on it, does it take you to that hotspot? Yeah, it does. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. So I was going to ask about that because this gives you sort of a preview. If you have 20 hotspots, it's a good way yeah. to, to know where you're at and what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. But it's kind of cool. So there's, I mean, I didn't particularly use this in, in my one, but you get cards as well. Um, so move that to one side. So this is cool. That adds another interactive element. So if you, I don't know, if you're doing a, a kind of sort of mystery experience, somebody's looking through something on a desk or a table or something you can add this and then you can add like let's say image text link and stuff but then what you could do is if it's you could add have say like a, a photo on a table and then add this on on top of it add an image so that when they click on it then it opens the photo in front of them and gives them and you could like put some I don't know text on it and stuff explaining who's in the photo and whatnot and if it's you could right, the right, plot in your, right. In your like clues or if you yeah, click on yeah. the button, is it just a pointer to a file or no? Oh, I see. So you can add yeah. an image yeah. and text. You can add the image and text. Got it. Um, Got it. A URL if you need be. But yeah, makes yeah. sense. So that's that's kind of cool. Do you know there's the ability to add, let's say, a flat video? So you just want, let's like, say, you have a TV and you want to add a video inside the TV. Don't think so. Not not as yet. Okay. Cool. Um, uh, no, just image at the moment. Yeah. But no, that, that would be cool. Right. Like if you want a video that kind of gives you even extra clues, right? But it's more in the TV yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that, that would be pretty cool. So yeah, so those those are that's pretty much everything. So then once you're all done and you've got everything, you know, as and where it is, oh, so we don't want it to go anywhere after that, stop. Okay. Now we're done. Okay. So once that's finished saving. So then you click on done and the experience is created. And how do you uh, watch this? Yeah, so you click on done and then it will take you back to your basic information page. I see. And you can publish and here. And then you hit publish. I see. Okay. So then that will take it and then it will. So it will process. Processing. Yeah. And then it's also worth mentioning that you can also add your own thumbnails like I did for the actual experience. But yeah. then after that like this one, then you just come in, rather than just click on edit or whatnot, you just click on the center of the thing, and then that will take you into the main page where you can watch your experience in all its glory. And you can watch it on the web here by dragging your mouse, but you can also watch it on like a web VR ready browser yeah. or Yeah, yeah. I'd I'd advise yeah, I'd advise watching on a headset. Right. Where yeah. Possible. It's gonna be much better. Um, yeah. Yeah, because it's that's that's kind of how I sort of created it purely for you know, headset consumption. Right. Um, cause it's just, you get so much more out of it. And then I know they have apps like for the go and for the rift. Mm -hmm. Um, are you able to see these experiences through those apps? Yes. I think at the moment though, you can only search from via the account that it's on. Yeah. I don't, so, I, I was looking for yours and I didn't see a place where you can just see experiences. Hopefully they'll add yeah. something like that to, yeah. to the app. I think, I think, yeah, I think it's like a, might be a bug or something at the moment, but. Yeah, or maybe they're um, working on that feature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. It's, it's, it's something that I sort of have mentioned. To, yep. Um, so it's something they're looking into. So yeah, that'll probably be fixed fairly soon. But yeah, in the meantime, you, you have to look into, find the creator's profile. And then, you know, like here, profile page. And then find it through here. But yeah, actually, there's not much in there, but that will change soon enough. So that's using the experience. You can also add like 360 videos to VR, just plain yeah. all 360 videos, basically, and yeah, build yeah, collections yeah. and all that. Yeah, but today yeah. was mainly yeah. about the experience. So yeah. I do also want to make sure everybody knows that VR is a sponsor on my audio podcast. But we did this just because I always like introducing people to different apps. I've covered other apps with hotspots. So this wasn't paid or anything like that. Just like to make sure people know that there's a variety of apps out there. But I wanted to get it out there so people know that beer does sponsor my audio podcast so
Okay, well, very cool, Daniel. I really appreciate your time showing us this. Oh, thank you for having me. If people want to get a hold of you, obviously they can go to the Veer page that you have, but do you yeah. have a Twitter? Do you want to give them an email? Whatever you like. Yeah, I'm, I'm on all of the social medias, uh, Twitter and Instagram mainly, at Daniel K. Hatton. Excellent. Well, thanks again, Daniel. And to the rest of you, I'm glad you're here with us. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And remember to click on the subscribe button so that I can get more guests like Daniel to join us in our tutorial series. If you are ever in the Southern California area, we have a monthly meetup with lots of great VR, AR, and MR presentations. You can join or RSVP for our next meetup at howtocreatevr.com forward slash meetup. Finally, if you are interested in learning more about how to create VR, AR, and MR experiences, please visit howtocreatevr.com. So until the next episode, I'm Marcelo Lewin. Cheers, everyone.